Good afternoon um, and welcome to this planning committee meeting being held on Wednesday, the 17th of February, uh, 2021. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely by a Microsoft Teams due to the restrictions in relation to COVID-19. This meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images, audio of those individuals present and or speaking at the Planning Committee will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council website at www.cafilli.gov. UK. Due to restrictions in relation to COVID-19, planning committee site visits have been suspended and this meeting will not be open to the press and general public. However, interested parties may make a request to attend remotely and speak in regard to any item on this agenda. Votes for this meeting will be taken by roll call. When a vote is required, members will be asked to state their vote when their name is called. I will now carry out a roll call. Um, for attendance, please can you announce yourself as present when I call out your name. We start as usual, Councillor Adams. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Aldworth. Present. Councillor Andrews. Andrews. Present, present, Chair. Could people switch off their mic after we're already, already having, having feedback? feedback. Uh, uh, Councillor Angel. Angel. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bevan. No, I haven't got his apologies come through, so I assume that he is absent. Councillor Mike Davis. Yes, I can see you, Mike. Thank you. Councillor Fussell. Not yet. Councillor Rob Goff. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hardacre, we've had an apology. Councillor Linda Lindsay Hardin. Present, Chair. Councillor Higgs. Present, Chair. Councillor Hussey. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Miles. Present. Councillor Gaynor Oliver, we've received an apology from her. Myself. Councillor Simmons. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor John Taylor. Present, Chair. Thank you. And we've had apologies as well from Councillor Whitcomb and Councillor Tom Williams. Um, and also an apology from uh, Maria Godfrey from Environmental Health. Can we now go to agenda item two for declarations of interest? Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on the agenda in accordance with Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. If you have a declaration of interest on any item on the agenda, could you indicate now, please? Could you put your hand up? No? Okay, thank you. We can now go on to the minutes to approve and sign the minutes of the last meeting. That's pages one to eight. I'll go through them first of all, just for accuracy. Page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, Page eight. Everybody Move happy accepted. Those? Sorry. Move we accept. Thank you very much, Councillor Angel. Seconded. 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 Right. Seconded. It's, it's just a hands up to indicate. All those in favour? Thank you. Right. We now. Chair, move on I'd to... be abstaining on that because I wasn't present at that meeting. I understand. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, we, we now move on to agenda item four, which is uh, item code number 200662 out, which is land northwest of Atcombe Cottage, Waterloo Lane, Machen, Caffili. 
Um, this is on pages 7 to 28. Um, this has been referred back for reasons for refusal. Um, I'm going to fetch in, first of all, uh, Councillor, sorry, uh, Mr. Carwin Power. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, I, I'm having difficulty with my Wi-Fi signal, so hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, and uh, it doesn't cut in and out as I speak. Um, this is an application, for, as you say, for the property at uh, at Cum Cottage, Lawn Waterloo in Machen. Um, this application was reported to committee last month uh, with a recommendation for approval, but members at that committee voted to refuse the application and therefore the application was uh, deferred to this committee for a report on reasons for refusal. Uh, before I go into my presentation, um, you will have received a letter today from a uh, Mr Williams, who was the agent who spoke at committee last month, uh, with regards to the uh, content of the, the preface report that's, that's before you today. Uh, and in, in his uh, email, Mr Williams suggests that the report introduces new information. Sorry, my Wi-Fi went then. Fails to have regard for the fact that the site was not included within the settlement limits in the 2010 LDP. Uh, it would set a precedent for other development in the area. Uh, fails to provide a reason for refusal on immunity grounds, as discussed by members previously. And therefore, the report is improper as it does not uh, follow the resolution followed set up by members. With regard to that, um, I would su suggest that um, in terms of this uh, report, the constitution says where members propose refusal contrary to officer recommendation, the constitution says that the, a further report will be, will be put forward to the following meeting, which discusses the reasons for refusal and considers the planning merits and legal implications of such a decision um, prior to members ratifying the decision of the previous committee. In respect of that, uh, I will go, I will cons consider uh, Mr. Williams's comments. Um, the report does produce new information, but not in respect of any grounds which weren't considered at the previous matter, the previous committee. Uh, it merely provides uh, further information on the, the matters that were previously considered. Uh, in terms of the uh, f the fact that the site was not allocated within the previous LDP, um, I cannot comment on that decision. I wasn't uh, a party to that decision, but that has no bearing on the determination of this application, which has to be considered on its own planning merits in any, in any, any account. Further to that, as this application is considered on its own planning merits, that would not set a precedent for other dwellings with large gardens to be approved for dwellings in the gardens in the future. Um, those applications would have to be similar to this one or very much the same as this one in order for the circumstances to allow a dwelling to be approved. Um, in terms of a reason for refusal on immunity grounds, as previously stated and as stated in the uh, PREFES report, this application is for reserve matters, sorry, for outline planning consent with all matters other than access reserved for future consideration. Therefore, the siting of the dwelling is not for consideration at this time. In that regard, it is not possible to consider whether this proposal would have an impact on the immunity of the neighbouring property at this moment in time. Therefore, it would be remiss, remiss of me as an officer and remiss of the planning department to advise members to refuse an application on immunity grounds for a matter that they cannot consider at this time. Therefore, it is not improper for a reason for refusal to be to not be put in the report in respect of that matter. Turning to the report that's before you, you will notice on uh, Appendix B and Appendix C on pages 25 and 27 of the report, there are aerial photographs contained within the report. The one at Appendix B is the aerial photograph from 2001 which shows that the garden of Atcombe Cottage was clearly being was clearly uh, heavily wooded at that time and was not being used as part of the curtilage of that dwelling and certainly not for a, a domestic garden. If you look at the appendix on appendix C on, on page 27, 
That is the 2010 aerial photograph. And this clearly shows that that area of land has now been landscaped and included within the curtilage of Atcombe Cottage. And indeed, there is a hard surfaced area at the very entrance to the site of the meadows, which is the new housing site to the north. Uh, on that basis, we have considered that the application site is now part of the curtilage of the dwelling, has been for more than 10 years, and in that regard, that weighs heavily in favour of the recommendation of the of approval for this development. In terms of setting a precedent, as previously stated, um, this application site is part of the curtilage of Atcombe Cottage. It has a domestic appearance and does not appear as part of the open countryside. The adjacent land is covered by a number of uh, uh, allocations within the LDP and other allocations such as a sink, a TPO and a special landscape area, which give it sufficient protection that it would not be possible to develop that land uh, without having to overcome those issues as part of any application. Um, this land is not covered by uh, a TPO or a sink. It is part of the special landscape area, but a very small part of it. Uh, and in that, that, that regard, it is not considered that the loss of this area would have a significantly detrimental impact on the special landscape area and would not set a dangerous precedent for development of other gardens in similar circumstances throughout the county borough. In that regard, uh, it is considered that the application should be should be approved in accordance with the recommendation. Uh, however, if members are minded to refuse, as previously stated, we don't think we can defend a refusal on the on the issue of amenity and an off a reason for refusal hasn't been offered on that regard. But a reason for refusal on the basis that the, the application site is outside of the settlement limits and has not been justified is offered for you. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Um, members, um, are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Woodland, do you want to come in? I see your hand up. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, in, in the opener, in the spirit of openness and transparency, um, to pick up on the point that Mr. Powell made, um, representations were made this week by Mr. Williams, who asked to um, speak again at this deferred uh, the meeting. Um, he was informed by myself that under the council's public speaking protocol that he wasn't allowed to do this but um, in light of the preface report content he was allowed um, to um, submit representations to members which i understand has already been distributed by the committee clerk um, the, the same um, opportunity was afforded to the agent um, but the agent declined um, to, su to submit anything for members consideration and was happy for the matter to take his course chair i just thought i needed to add that Roy, your mic's off. Then all that was wasted, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Uh, I wonder that, that there's no indication from any members wishing to ask questions or wishing to raise any issues on this. Um, is anybody prepared at this stage to move a motion? Uh, Councillor Adams, your hand is up. Would you like to speak? Yes, th thank you, Chair. Um, I've actually been looking at uh, the report that came to us last month uh, at, uh, at committee uh, compared to the one that we've got this month and of course uh, they're pretty much exactly the same the only difference being the comments in the uh, the preface report and I'm looking down to Mr Williams's uh, comments and towards the bottom he's uh, having a go at us a bit because talking about the uh, higher and uh, upper and lower case for grant and refuse now of course at, in all of our reports the recommendation to grant or refuse are always in uppercase from officers. Uh, so to bring that into it is, uh, I think, a little bit, uh, you know, go going a bit too far in his attempts to uh, get us to change our mind uh, on the recommendation and to further the reason for refusal that came up last month. So that, that uh, actually was a bit petty I thought 
Um, but I, I'm more than uh, happy to tonight to uh, to move the officer's recommendation to grant with all, all the extra information, if we want to call it extra, that uh, we've now had in writing compared to what Carwin told us last month. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, is that seconded? I'll Councillor second, Miles? Uh, I, I would second that. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Miles. Is there any amendment at all? No? Uh, Councillor Adams, your hand is still up. Sorry. OK, thank you. In which case, then, um, we'll take a vote on that. Um, the, the vote is that permission be granted. Um, all those in favour, that will be Councillor Adams. You'll be four, naturally. You've moved it. Yes, I've got Councilor my hand Hogwarts. back up now. Four. Councillor Andrews. Four. Uh, Councillor Higgs, you want your hand, hand up? Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Councillor Higgs, we're, 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 we're not using hands up function, are we, Chair? Chair. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, no, we're not we're using not hands up. Hands okay, up. just okay, a roll just call, call, sorry. sorry. Just a roll just call, call, yes. yes. Okay. Councillor Higgs, Chair, 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 sorry. I got a lot of feedback. Would you mind taking a yeah. vote yeah. and start, please? I'll do that I'll again. Do that yes, again. Thank, yes you. thank you. Could people switch, switch their mics, mics off? Mics Only off. put them on when they're speaking. Okay. We'll start again. Uh, Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Aldworth. Four. Councillor Andrews. Four. Councillor Angel. Four. Councillor Bevan is absent. Councillor Mike Davis. Four. Councillor Goff. Four. Councillor Hardacre is absent. Councillor Lindsay Hardin. Four. Councillor Higgs. Councillor Higgs. Four. Thank you. Councillor Hussey. Four. Thank you, Councillor Miles. Four. Councillor Simmons. Four, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Four. And myself, four. Um, can you confirm that, please, from committee section? The total is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, thirteen votes for. Uh, none against, no abstention, so permission is granted. Yes, that tallies, Chair. That's Thank you. We now move on to uh, subject to conditions, of course. Yes, um, we now move on to agenda item five, which is code number 200170NCC. Um, this is the land adjacent to Rowan Road T Sign Risker. The agenda item is on page 29 to 46. And the case officer is Elizabeth Rowley. Elizabeth, would you like to present this one now, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair, and good evening, members. Uh, uh, can you uh, see the presentation on the screen, Chair? It's on the screen, yes. Okay, lovely. So uh, this is an application to vary condition two, approved plans, condition four, approved car parking provision, and condition six, details associated with vehicular access and pedestrian footpath. All of the above relate to planning consent 19 oblique 0053 oblique full, which was granted by members of planning committee in March 2019 to erect a community hall resource centre with associated garden area. Okay. So the site is located on the Teesign estate and is a man-made plateau of informal open space with formal children's play provision directly above. So to the south is Elm Drive, to the north of the site is Holly Road, uh, to the west is Rowan Road, where there is a, an existing access leading into the informal open space. And then the children's play, uh, which is formal open space, formal open space play provision is located directly above. 
Um, so here is the red line boundary of the scheme that was previously approved on the site. All is very much as per the proposal for consideration and the proposed changes will be shown in the next slide. So as I previously stated, the proposal intends to vary the approved plans of planning consent 19 oblique 0053 oblique 4 with those changes relating uh, to uh, reduce vehicle access width uh, after the first 10 metres into the site. So it would be this section here. Uh, road widening would take place here under no dig construction um, because there are trees within close proximity to the access, which whilst not protected, are considered to have significant amenity value. Um, similarly, the, the previous proposals intended to uh, construct a two metre footpath running parallel to the existing access, um, but subsequently this application for consideration uh, seeks a revised scheme which would result in the creation of an additional vehicle uh, pedestrian footpath running through the site and up to the, up the embankment to the building itself, which would be halfway up the hill from Elm Drive and the existing access into the site. So this, this proportion here. Um, the footprint of the community itself, centre itself, that would be reduced as well. Um, so you can see that the existing dotted line here was the previously approved uh, footprint of the building. So it's a slightly reduced uh, in terms of its floor area and consequently as a result of that reduced floor area, that in turn has resulted in the need to provide less car parking spaces within the site. So originally there was 17 and two disabled spaces. This application now proposes 14 and one disabled space, um, which complies with the requirements in terms of uh, the st parking standards. So the next slide then just shows uh, pr the proposed floor plans and elevations of the, the, the community centre itself. Um, so the application was advertised by means of a site notice and 33 neighbours were notified by way of letter. Ten objections were received and those have been addressed in the officer report, including a community council objection also that's been addressed too. In terms of the application itself, members are advised that the local planning authority can only consider whether any material changes have occurred since the original planning consent was granted in March 2019. This application is not an opportunity to revisit the first principles of development on the site. In that respect, the key changes for consideration relate to the design of the building and any associated impacts in terms of visual or neighbouring amenity. So if I went, go back to uh, this aerial photography uh, site, which was of the previously approved layout. As you can see, the building would be going in here. Um, relatively, you know, minor changes in terms of a reduced footprint. The nearest neighbours are significantly uh, located uh, a reasonable distance away. So it's not considered that there would be any unacceptable impact in terms of neighbouring amenity um, or visual amenity in that respect. Um, the other key issue to consider would be highway safety as a result of the amended layout regarding the car parking, the reduced length of access after the first 10 metres into the site and uh, the proposal to erect, construct uh, a, a footpath halfway up the hill between uh, um, drive and uh, Holly Road on, on the on Rowan Road side to the west. Um, highway, the transportation and engineering manager have considered the revised scheme acceptable subject to conditions. Those conditions are outlined in the officer report. Uh, similarly, with the previously approved conditions uh, associated with the original planning consent. Um, so on that basis, members are advised that the proposal is not materially different to that which was previously approved 
and there would be no resultant adverse impacts associated with the development. Therefore, subject to conditions specified in the officer report, the development is considered acceptable and members are recommended to grant approval for the development. Um, that concludes my presentation, Chair. You muted, Chair. You're on mute, Chair. Beg your pardon. My apologies. We, we're now going to see, receive presentations from the objectors and the agent. Um, so can I welcome, first of all, uh, Mrs. Zoe Davis, who is speaking um, as an objector to this proposal. Um, are you there? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? You're, you're on mute, Chair. Again, it's sorry, I do, do beg your pardon. Mine is flicking from mute to to open again. Um, yes, you're entitled to five minutes uh, speaking time. Welcome to the meeting. You're entitled to five minutes speaking time. I'll time you on my watch here. Um, shortly before the end of the five minutes, I'll give you a warning. Um, but you're, you're going to your time limit. Um, other than that, the floor is yours, Mrs Davis. You can start whenever you wish. Thank you, councillor. Okay, um, most of you probably remember me from the original objection. I, well, I objected to the original building back in 2019. Here I am again. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just the fact that there's, there is a lot that has changed in the last two years, as we're well aware. Now, in regards to the new building design, it doesn't, well, there are a lot of differences, of course. I'll start with the steps to to start with. Um, where the steps are going to, well, where they want the steps to be going up the embankment, they are on a blind corner bend, which is a shame, very shame that we're in the COVID crisis because I would have requested a site visit and I offered you all a cup of coffee because I only live around the corner. All right. Um, because it is extremely dangerous. Also in the proposal and the meetings, that the minutes that you've got from me that would have been sent out to you, Point one that I made under uh, the Wellbeing of the Future Generations Act in regards to Rowan Road, which is the, the road that you would need to turn off onto the site. Um, it is now that street is only 5.1 metres wide, which doesn't meet highway regulations at 5.5 to 7.3 metres wide of a, a two car way of having two cars. So if that is how the road or the road that's going to be used in order for them to get in and out of a car park which they're putting on a children's playing field that either needs to be made into an only left turn out or only right turn out so that needs to be revised with highways because that road is not wide enough so that is going to be extremely dangerous also because this does need to be taken into consideration the fact that it is next to a children's play area a skate park and a multi-use games area. So, you know, I'm trying to be very considerate here. Um, also, um, as well as under the Future Generations Act, we do need to look at, uh, like I said, a lot has changed in the last two years since I've last seen you all smiling. <laughs> um, one, uh, the, that is now the only green space left in Teesside or left on the estate for any of our kids because the other two green spaces have now been changed or put forward by the council to become designated wildflower meadows which is going to which last summer looked absolutely beautiful because of the weather that we had and the fact that we all had opportunities that we don't normally have to exercise to take an hour a day to walk the dogs for me it was walking with my nieces and nephews because i don't have my own children so I was helping my brothers, you know, um, with their childcare because I wasn't in work myself. And I was using that field in particular to go up and kick around a football on. However, it's not going to be there anymore if this goes ahead. Now, there are a lot, as you can see from the other points that I put in, especially when we look at the cohesive communities point. You know, there are two local, um, a party of two local groups working together you know, we are the play and I, I do. I am also the chairwoman of the play and learn group. Now, we did a lot of extensive community work 
when we did all our research into the children's play area, which at the moment is temporarily on hold, um, waiting to sign the check and for our builders to go in for the under eight play area. And we, well, we already paid for the skate park. We paid for the multi-use games area and we've been working with the WHQS on that. And we know we did have a we have a series of family picnic benches that were going to go on that area. However, we've had to put everything on hold due to this project because we don't know what's going on. We don't know what they're doing. Um, as much as they're saying that they're a community team, a community project, they won't work with us. And I've got quite a few different community hats. Um, I'm, a, I'm a youth worker. I'm a school teacher. I work within the play and learn group. Um, I've just taken over as a direct, one of the main directors of a little community shop called the TLC, um, which is together local, together the local community. And also, um, you know, I was wondering where the funding was coming from, because it is a very large building with a lot of money. And, you know, there is a, a blank church on the other side of the road from them, which You're is... 20 seconds left now, Mrs Davis. Um, that's fine. What I'll say then, guys, is thank you very much. Um, and, you know, I know you've listened to me waffle for the second time. And you know, I tried to be complete and utterly transparent with you. And I hope that the other group are doing exactly the same because I wear my heart on my sleeve. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you very much indeed. Just let me shut that off. That's the alarm. Right. <laughs> Okay, Stay safe. Um, and now we Bye. have um, a presentation from the agent, Mr. Richard Owen. Mr. Owen, yes, can you switch your mic up? Your mic is on. Can you hear me? Hear you loud, I can, you, Chair. Yeah. I can hear you, but very faintly. Right. I'll speak up. <laughs> okay. Again, you have five minutes of presentation time. Um, you start when you're ready. I'll I'll give you um, a warning when you get close to the end of your press of the, your five minute time limit. Right. Thank you very much, Chair. I shouldn't take anything like five minutes. Um, I thought it would be useful if I gave you some background information to aid you in your consideration of this application. I'm the applicant. I'm also a trustee of the Agape Community Church T Sign, which is a registered charity. Uh, Zoe Davis was talking about different hats that she wears. I'm also the secretary of the committee that runs the Channel View Community Hall. Um, our church has been active in the Risker area for 30 years plus, and we've used the Channel View Community Hall for more than 20 years. So we're therefore well aware of its condition and its shortcomings, which your officers have described in the report. And we believe that the community as a whole deserves better community facilities than exist at Channel View. We initially worked with the 5th Risker Scouts and Risker East Community Council to try and deliver funding for a new hall, but for various reasons they lost interest in the idea. We've now secured £70,000 from towards the project from nine different charitable bodies. Uh, with that the, and the reserves held by the Channel View Committee, sorry, the Channel View Hall Committee, and approval of current funding applications, we would have enough to build the hall that's described in this application. And all of the funding applied for and secured is specifically for the development of community facilities, and none of these funds would be directly available to the County Council. You, you have to be a charity to uh, bid for these funds. We expect decisions on, current, on the current applications within the next couple of months. Obviously, Chair, if we don't get the money, then it doesn't go ahead, but we're getting the planning consent in place uh, first, hoping that we will get the money. It's our intention that the new hall would be open and available to all of the community, both because that's the way we work as a church and because that's the only way in which the running costs of the new hall will be covered. The subject of the lease of the land for the construction of the hall is obviously separate from consideration of the planning application, and it's currently being discussed with your officers. We've got enthusiasm for the idea of the new hall from the groups that use Channel View up until March 2020. And at that point, the hall was quite busy with nine or 10 groups using it and 150 plus people a year, sorry, a week. We've also got enthusiasm and interest from groups and community services that aren't uh, represented in the T sign or Risker area at the moment. 
we'd be happy to work in accordance with the conditions suggested by your officers in the report. And thank you very much for the opportunity to address you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Owen. Um, Councillor Taylor, you've got your hand up. Would you like to speak? Yes, Chair. I wonder if I could ask a question of the officer. Um, if this application was refused tonight, does that mean that there can be no development there or would the original 2019 application still still stand and that the development allowed under that uh, um, under that um, consent could t then take place? Yes, Councillor Taylor, that's correct. Uh, there's an extant consent on this, the site that doesn't expire until um, tw March 2024. So essentially, subject to discharging any pre-commencement conditions associated with uh, the, the the existing consent on the site, then the the charity can obviously build at the community centre on, on the site. So whatever our decision is tonight, Mrs. Davis and the other objectors won't be able wouldn't be able to achieve what what they're actually asking for. No, Councillor Taylor, that's correct. There is, there's a fallback position here, um, um, and that and that's why it's been made explicitly clear in the report that we can't revisit matters um, which have been raised by members of the public in terms of whether or not that band should be used for its intended purposes. That, that's what I thought, but I, I just wanted to make sure it was brought out fully in tonight's meeting. So thank, thank, thank you, Ms Rowley. You're welcome. Uh, Councillor Adams, you have your hand up. You have yeah, a question. Thank you, thank you Chair. Councillor Taylor has just covered most of uh, what I wanted to confirm with uh, the officer there. Uh, so much of this may fall back really on the uh, the applicant group. If they weren't able to take forward their amendments, which they obviously believe they, they need to do, would they still fall back onto the original approved application that uh, that they can obviously just carry on with? Uh, it, it might have an effect on we can't do what we want to do unless we have the new application approved. Um, they obviously can't come back to to answer that, uh, but uh, that that's a position they would find themselves in. Then, if we refuse tonight, they would go back and have to consider. Is the old original application enough for us to want to do? Thank you, Chair. Uh, did you want to just clarify anything on that at all, Elizabeth? Yeah, no, I think that, you that's I correct, Chair. Obviously, yeah. the, the, there's been a reason. I don't know what that reason is. Um, obviously, for this this second application for consideration. So obviously, whatever changes have been submitted for consideration. Um, are considered reasonably necessary um, for, for, for the charity to bring the development forward. But as I said, there is an extant fallback position which they would wish to explore if if the application was refused tonight. OK, thank you. Uh, I've got two people with their hands up. Now, Councillor Mike Davis and then Councillor Miles. Uh, thank you, Chair. If I can ask a question to the Highways, please. Um, the objector speaker mentioned um, the difficulties with the steps, and I thought uh, what was interesting as well is that the uh, alterations of uh, Rowan Road, uh, which was making the uh, highway uh, narrower. Um, I'd like uh, uh, Highways to uh, tell me if they are really happy uh with that uh or is it something they could revisit um well rowan road's not actually been narrowed any further um as mrs davis pointed out it is narrower than we would like by today's standards um our sort of guidelines presently for a standard estate road is 5.5 meters this comes in at 5.1 um i imagine this estate was probably built in the late 60s, early 70s, Liz, around about that time. Yeah. That would have been acceptable at the time. Um, but manual for streets, which is like another current guideline we've got, does advocate that 
on minimum width for uh, two way traffic is 4.8 meters. So in our and it can cater for two way traffic quite easily. Um, I think Mrs Davis also brought up in her written representation, um, which she submitted that it hasn't got any sort of white centre lines, but it doesn't meet the criteria for that because um, the sort of Department for Transport states that um, only is like a minimum width of 5.5 would require white centre lines. Um, so, you know, that is something we've considered with sort of width wise. Um, to be honest with you, Liz, I'm a bit confused. The reference to the steps is that the new pedestrian access uh, they're referring to? Yeah, that would. Uh, there's no um, reference of steps in the office of no. Remote. It could well be a, a ramp. Um, because yeah, we, we've conditioned up for like a pedestrian sort of um, landing at the bottom there, plus some sort of guardrail. Um, obviously, with the you know the potential levels and steepness there. Um, we've also obviously because you're not coming out onto a footway either. Um, you'd be we we've sort of conditioned for a drop crossing opposite, so then you would link onto the crossing opposite. Okay, thanks for that, Claude. You might sorry, do, sorry, Jay. I could just yeah. uh, quickly come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with regard to the Rowan Road then, just mm -hmm. for me to be uh, clear, because mm -hmm. you explained about the width of the road. Uh, yeah. as well, but is that the same as the 2019 application or is that being narrowed on this one? Um, no, I don't think it was being narrowed. The actual highway itself wasn't being sort of affected at all by the previous one either. Um, it's, it's not being narrowed any further. It's always been like 5.1 uh, since okay. it was built. So we're not actually narrowing um, narrowing the highway itself. OK, but, that, that's fine. I, I, that's okay. all I needed to know. Thank you very much. OK, um, before before I call in Councillor Miles, I, I can see that um, Mrs. Da Zoe Davis has got a hand up. Can I just advise Mrs. Davis that um, she's not allowed to take part in the discussion. She's only allowed to to make her presentation and that's the only involvement that she can have in the meeting. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Davis, you put your hand down now. So, uh, uh, Councillor Brenda Miles, please. Thanks, Jay. Um, Mrs. Davis mentioned that some of the open space in the area has been given over to wildflower meadows since the original application was passed in 2019. I was wondering if your officer could comment on whether that has affected the amount of open space um, available in the area or are the figures quoted correct that um, the requirement is 1.99 hectares and the amount of open space in the area currently then is still 2.26. Is that still correct given the, given the developments with the wildflower meadows? If um, Mrs. Davis is referring to the wildflower meadow, which would have previously been on the site where the original application was granted planning consent for. I, I would have to I would have to revisit that application in detail because nothing has come been presented to us to indicate um, that there has been a change in circumstances between informal and formal open space provision. But notwithstanding that, uh, this is informal open space. Um, there is sufficient open space remaining within the area. There, there is also usable open informal open space on the site to to the to the east of the proposed community centre because there would still be remaining land available there, and. Given the location of the development, it's also considered that there is, there is a significant amount of open space outside of, of the open space parameter buffers, uh, usable both formal and informal open space. And um, consequently, is not this isn't considered to be such, such an issue on this occasion. Um, and we have to bear in mind the existing fallback position of the previous consent. Now, this application would, whilst the, the, the reference in the officer report to the previous application, 19 oblique 0053 fall, um, the, the amount of open space remaining has, has been left the same. Actually, in terms of this application, with regards to the smaller footprint and the reduced widening of the road and the reduced car parking area, those percentages 
would be more favourable in terms of the amount of informal space remaining in in the area than one compared to the previous application. But it all, all you know, was accepted that it would be very minor and negligible to that to that effect. Um, does that help, Councillor Miles? Yeah, thanks very much. OK, um, I don't see any other hand up, so there's no further questions. Would members like to move a motion relative to this, either for or against? I'm willing to move, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, I'm, go I'm going to move that the um, application is granted in accordance with the officer's recommendations and conditions. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, is that seconded? I will take second. Oh, there we I go. hear a number of voices prepared to yeah. second that. OK, I'm happy with that. So we have to go through the roll call once again. So it's it's for permission to be granted. Those in favour? Councillor Adams? For. Councillor Alworth? For. Councillor Andrews? For. Councillor Angel? For. Councillor Mike Davis? For. Councillor Goff. For. Councillor Hardin. For. Councillor Higgs. For. Councillor Hussey. For. Councillor Miles. For. Councillor Simmons. For. Councillor Taylor. For. For. He moved the resolution and myself. For. So the vote is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 members for, no, no abstentions, nobody against, so permission is granted. Uh, you, you accept that tally do you in committee section, Rebecca? Yes, Chair, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, members. That uh, concludes.